Right. Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see so many of you here on a, a last-minute lightning talk. Um, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, structured logging and or all logs in general and how we work with them and uh, kind of when when structured logging and, and full text search might not necessarily always be all that we need or too much. Um, so my name is Leonard Gram. I'm one of the back-end developers at Grafana Labs. I uh, work on a Grafana, the, the open source uh, metrics and visualization solution. Uh, and I work a lot in, in Go. Um, and uh, I'm here to tell you a little bit of a story. Um, so if we look back to the, the past decennium of, uh, of logs, uh, or the past two decenniums even, a lot of things have happened. Um, I remember early on in my career, it was, was pretty common that I had to SSH into machines to kind of find out what was going on in the systems. Uh, at even at one point, I wrote a multi-SSH uh, manual client to be able to do that and kind of grep over logs over many different servers at the same time and, and find out information. Uh, but in recent years, uh, centralized logging has been commonplace. We've seen a lot of tools for that, like Graylog and Elasticsearch, Splunk, and so on and so forth. Um, a lot of things have happened, and, and not only that, um, search engines have become a lot more accessible. So it used to be that search engines were something you, you bought. Uh, even you, you, Either you were a big company that built it yourself, uh, or you bought it from someone else. Uh, I remember I was at, at Dagens Nyheter, one of the big companies here in Sweden for newspapers, and, and they bought a very specialized search solution for, for the website at the time. Uh, something we'd just like pick off the shelf with Elasticsearch these days. Um, so a lot has happened, and now we can use that to make logs more readable, which makes sense. Uh, logs are text after all, and we need to find information in text, and that it was, is what search does. Um, the latest kind of addition and the thing we, I, I kind of hinted at in my, my not-so-subtle uh, uh, name of the talk is, is structured logging. So it's become more and more common for, for developers to have access to structured logging, basically being able to log messages with timestamps, but also add some metadata so that you can actually kind of find all the different log messages related to a specific user or a specific request or something like that. Which, which gives you kind of the, the infinite power of being able to find out almost anything, almost like, like in Star Wars, where, where uh, it says the whole, uh, the, what's it called? Emperor Palpatine finds infinite power. Um, but unfortunately, um, this comes with uh, a few downsides as well. So logging um, is kind of easy and cheap and simple, but, but handling a big, uh, search engine isn't. It's actually quite costly and quite operationally complex. Because what happens is that we get a lot of indexes over these different words that, that we work with, and uh, we need to be able to manage that. So a, a common experience I've had, and, and I think some of you maybe have experienced as well, is that you, you set up Elasticsearch and you get the log pipeline working and you get, you get everything working and start pushing some data and everything works pretty well and in, it's indexed right away and everything, you start using it and you, the first kind of, the, the first happy case is really, really happy. Um, but then you, you, you move further and you come to a point where you're pushing so much data and you, maybe not, you might not actually delete any data from it that it gets very cumbersome to run and operate. Um, and maybe your manager even comes up to you and, and tells you, could, could you log a little bit less? Could you like, think really hard before you write any log messages? Because we don't want to crash the system. Last week, when we had a big outage, the whole log service crashed, and we couldn't find out what was going on. And in my experience, that's not really what you want, um, obviously. Because then you, you go from thinking about what should I log and what do I have a use case for to do I even afford to log this. Um, so don't get me wrong here. Full text search and logs are still amazing. I, I'm not saying that. Uh, it, it isn't. I'm just saying that it's, it's also, uh, it comes with some downsides that can be pretty big. And I don't think we always need it. Um, so I mentioned earlier that I work at Grafana Labs. 
Uh, we, we kind of draw these beautiful graphs all day. Uh, we're all sketch artists. Um, we have lots of customers, so be, be, be patient with us if, if it doesn't render fast enough. Uh, but we also, jokes aside, um, have some data sources for metrics that we host for our customers. So have a SaaS solution and, and for these open source products and, and make it easy for our customers to handle their metrics that, that power these graphs. Um, and as you can may guess, we have the same kind of problems that you do. We need logging and we need to be able to understand what's going on in our systems so that we can handle downtime and help our customers. Um, so therefore, I'm, I'm here to kind of talk to you about an alternative approach to logging. Uh, definitely not the end all be all either, um, but an alternative way of kind of dealing with logs. And this is something that came to mind of one of my colleagues called Tom Wilkie. Uh, he joined us uh, early last year and, and uh, he came from a background working a lot with Prometheus and, and SRE and things like that. And um, we had a few different goals with the solution in mind. We wanted it to be super easy. We, we kind of wanted to, to satisfy Alice here. And, and, and I, I can feel her, actually. I, there, there's a lot of times where I feel like I've actually fought Elasticsearch. And like, I can't find the information I want because Elasticsearch is being too clever with indexing. I, I just want grep, a little bit of regexp, and, and uh, uh, a set of lines of logs so I can find the information I need. I don't need all the fancy stuff. Um, but we had more goals than that. Uh, we wanted it to be cheap. We talked about that before. We wanted it to be really easy to kind of manage. Uh, you shouldn't need a big team of engineers to, to, man the, to manage your log solution um, in most cases. And maybe most importantly, we wanted to support our existing workflows. We wanted it uh, to help us when we had downtimes, we had problems. We wanted the log solution to kind of do enough. Because uh, as you might imagine, if you go too simple, too cheap, you're not going to get the use out of it. So as a way of kind of finding a good middle ground, we, we kind of looked at what are our needs. Um, and with these considerations in mind, we kind of moved the, the question of, can I, can I log this, which the engineer had to answer in the previous uh, situation with Elasticsearch, um, to the uh, situation where the people in charge of the log solution has to kind of answer, do we actually need a full text indexing? Do we need this power? Or can we do something simpler? Can we get something simpler to kind of support us and do what we want and, and like make the developer just log whatever he needs to log to be able to manage the system? Um, and we kind of figure that you, you can get a long way with just uh, a few indexes. You don't, without having everything. You can, we need time, um, pretty obviously. It's one of the, the most common ways to slice in, in a debug outage. I know when something happens, so I want to look at the log lines from that time. But we also want a little bit more, so I want to maybe find out what application the problem comes from, so I can look at the logs for that application. I maybe even want to know what server it was. A few things like that, I want some metadata to be able to go and, and, and Slice and dice, I get a few logs, log lines that I can then use grep to kind of find the information I want, or just kind of get the information and look at it. I, I found that a lot of the time when I work with logs, it's not the searching that, I mean, I need to, to kind of find the right logs to some extent, but then I'll just look at the log lines and usually the weird things will kind of pop out at me. Um, so, uh, finally, I mean, like, a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, uh, full text search engine for logging can kind of be like getting a nail gun for that one nail you have to get in to put up a birdhouse. Um, all right, so, so let's very quickly wa walk through um, my common case for, for kind of debugging uh, a production problem. So I get an alert uh, up on the number one, the alert on the left side. Um, and I go into my dashboarding solution. My alert probably comes from my metrics, my time series metrics. It tells me I have too many requests, I have too many errors, I don't have any users using the system, something like that. So I go from that and I take the kind of metric query that I had there that was aggregated and, and told me something's going on but not what. And I take that and go into ad hoc mo query mode 
versus my, my metric data source, and I kind of start digging into the details. Maybe I remove some of the aggregations and I find out that a specific application and a specific server is having way more errors than, than others, and I, I kind of have an idea where to go. So I take this information and go to my log system and kind of input these filters again, the time range and all of that, and then if I need to, uh, I will go into my tracing solution if I need to find out details about individual queries and things like that to, to kind of pinpoint where the issue was, and, and hopefully I fix the production issue. So, this is kind of how we work, and, and by going through all these different systems, there's, there's a lot of friction. Um, so that's something we took in mind in, in kind of trying to design a solution. We run uh, in Kubernetes, on, and we use Prometheus for metrics. They work very well together, I don't know if, if you've joined, used them, but basically both Prometheus and Kubernetes use labels, uh, label values for metrics. So if you have a Kubernetes installation and you put a Prometheus uh, to consume metrics from that, it can just kind of use the metadata from that Kubernetes installation to find uh, all the kind of metrics that are available from the different applications and add them to Prometheus tagged with the same labels that Prometheus uh, Kubernetes used. So now you kind of have a one-to-one -one mapping, maybe with some rewrites. So we took that idea uh, and we thought that we can use that as well. This is actually quite enough. Uh, so we took um, the, the labels from Kubernetes and, and used the same way and used that with logs instead. So now we have log lines tagged with server, application, pod, things like that. A few different things and time, of course. And then that's the log line. Um, and we have kind of the same information. So we can reuse the metadata for both lo logs and metrics. And what happens when we do that is that all of a sudden uh, we can design a system like this. I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. I, I need to confess we are working on a solution based on, on these ideas. Uh, uh, and so in Grafana, we're working on something where you can actually you can open up, uh, you open your dashboard, uh, and then you take, you hit an explore button on one of your, your metrics queries. And now you're in an explore mode where you can work with a metric query, what I talked about before. And then you can open a, a, a log view right next to it. And because now in, in our kind of happy case, we use the same labels for both logs and metrics, we will get the logs for those metrics right away next to our metrics. Um, so I'm sorry I'm not going into detail on the tech, but I hope you can, can glean enough of it that it's, it's pretty, pretty simple. There is a big design doc, uh, or big and big, but there's enough design doc that you can go to on the web page if you want to need, read more. And I, there's going to be a query design doc very soon as well. Um, but this is something we're, we're heavily working on, um, and, and I think it's a really interesting idea, because what happens with this is that all of a sudden, uh, you can take, uh, you can actually log not as much as you want. I mean, there's going to be stops to that as well. But you can log almost an infinite amount of data because you aren't using all these in indexing. It's just raw text data kind of b bunched off by time, and you can find it by, by the labels. Um, so I think that's, that's most of it for me today. Um, I'd be very happy to talk with any of you about this further after the presentation, uh, or Grafana, or if you want some stickers, I have that as well. Um, we are hiring, by the way, um, fully remote company. Uh, the Grafana team is based here. Uh, I'm soon moving away. Um, and, and maybe most important, if you want to read more about these ideas or check out the product that we are working on based on the ideas, you can go to, to github.com grafana slash Loki. I hope it was worthwhile to you. Thank you for coming. <laughs>